This is the CISSP Domain 1 on Security and Risk Management. This is the first domain of the eight domains that build the common body of knowledge for the CISSP certification. Domain 1 includes these major topics. The first topic is security concepts. Then we're going to look at security governance. Governance deals with the way enterprise senior management will manage the organization. Policy is the third topic. Establish this framework of governance. So these are your written documents that define the rules on how we will manage and govern our enterprise. The next deals with compliance, the fact that there are laws and regulations that we have to abide by and comply with. We'll look at other aspects of legal and regulatory compliance components because they are developed in the United States. There also are global laws and considerations we have to account for. We'll look at professional ethics and then the huge project of risk management. Next, we'll look at personnel security. This deals with the procedures around hiring, managing, and terminating employees. And finally, we're going to look at security training and awareness so that our personnel are well-educated and constantly reminded about the requirements we have, which helps us govern our enterprise in a secure manner. The first major topic deals with security concepts. The main reason we have security concerns for our information systems is because those information systems hold these things called valuable information assets. That valuable information asset is anything that has value to the enterprise. In this regard, we would consider that these are files and the databases that our business requires to operate on. Any asset that has value to the enterprise is a valuable information asset. Now, very often, one of the terms you'll hear deals with a sensitive information asset. So any sensitive information simply means that that information has value. And if that information asset is somehow violated, whether a bad guy is able to alter the accuracy of the information or whether the information is actually stolen or destroyed, any compromise of that information asset means that the enterprise will lose money because that asset has now been compromised. The assets are broken up into two primary categories. The first category deals with tangible assets. Any asset that is physical is a tangible asset. This would include a server, a hard disk drive, optical disks, the actual data center itself. These are all types of tangible assets. If it's something that the enterprise owns and it is physical and it has value, then this is a tangible asset. The second class of valuable information assets deals with intangible assets. That means it's not physical. And this would be something along the lines of software and information stored on the computers called soft data. Other forms of intellectual property, trade secrets, these are types of intangible assets. So once again, information stored on computers, in databases, source code. Developers write their code that gets compiled into the applications themselves. So the source code is always in a soft format. And that is another form of intangible assets, data files. And we're going to also look at personally identifiable information that might be stored on our customers or our vendors, our suppliers, things along these lines. These valuable information assets, their value will change over time. Here's an example. I have a couple of credit cards in my wallet right now. Numbers on those credit cards today have a fairly high value on them. In other words, if a bad guy were able to know that information, the bad guy could actually commit fraud using that credit card number. But in 100 years, when that credit card has expired, that information no longer has any value. So over time, the value of information assets will change. And we need to recognize this change of value and we have to recognize that sometimes the value of that information will increase over time and other times it will decrease. The reason this is important is because we will spend an appropriate amount of money to protect a valuable information asset. This very direct relationship that says if an asset has value of, let's say, $1,000, I don't want to spend $2,000 to protect it. 
I'm already losing $1,000 in that scenario. If an information asset has a value of $1,000, it makes sense for me to spend $100 to protect it. If that asset's value changes from $1,000, let's say to $10, then I don't want to spend $100 anymore to protect that asset. So I'll need to monitor and be aware of the value of the information asset over time and adjust the security controls I have in place to protect that asset over time so that I'm not spending too much money to protect it. Or if the value of the asset increases over time, perhaps I'm not spending enough to protect the asset and now I'm accepting too much risk. In other words, I'm only spending $100 to protect a million dollar asset. And the $100 I'm using to protect the asset with isn't sufficiently protecting the asset. And I could lose way too much money and that's not acceptable. So all of our protections must be cost justified. 